welcome back guys and today I am here for a little bit of a different video now I sort of want to try and do some small you know sort of guides to F1 2017 something you know I've really sort of wanted to do for the last couple of years so if you guys have got any other recommendations for things you want me to sort of go through on how you can do better then please do leave them down in the comments but I wanted to start today by talking about car setups one of the things that probably most F1 players don't really get how to use, don't really get what they need to do. So I sort of felt today would be a good chance to sort of talk about what each thing does within the setup guide and sort of how you obviously you can improve it to, you know, to help yourself. Now obviously everyone is different with this. All these things that I say personally suit myself. You guys might want to try different things with it, but I'm sort of going to try and state the raw facts and then my personal preferences over like each thing. So obviously as I said, you know, your guys, it might be slightly different, but obviously the fuel load how much fuel you've got in the car for, you know, qualifying and things, you want to run that as low as possible. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple, I would like to imagine that, you know, sometimes you will have to fuel save on your outlap and your uh, a pit in lap as well, you know, just in case. But yeah, that, that is fuel, very, very simple. Now, first thing then that you've actually properly sort of got to think about is the aeroid dynamics. Now, obviously, this can only be the front wing and the rear wing, the angle 11 means that the wing is very very high very very straight so it causes the most resistance and this will mean that you will not be able to go as quick in a straight line but you will have more grip in the corners because the car is creating more downforce where the air is being pushed higher up above it now obviously um the front wing and the rear wing on this game you usually want to keep them sort of either the same or one apart now obviously f1 2017 cars have got a lot more grip than recent years worth of cars so you know you can actually afford to run these a little bit lower on this year's game now personally obviously you want you can't actually change the gearbox now in uh since the hybrid era began if i'm not mistaken you can't actually change the gearbox on your car so the best way you know to sort of uh, work out your best speed is to change around the angles the, the wing angles so obviously personally i'm at australia just because it's the first track on the calendar you probably want to run ever so slightly below 6.6, six, so perhaps maybe 4.5 or 5.5, five, five, depending on your personal preferences. And, you know, that means you'll be able to get a good top speed, but there is still a bit of downforce when it comes to the corners. Now, obviously, if you run 1.1, one, one, which I would not recommend anywhere, really, um, then obviously that would mean you're incredibly quick down the straights, but you don't have much grip through the corners. And obviously that is a bit of trial and error, but yeah, that is front wing and rear wing, the aerodynamics. Now... Next one is the transmission, and this one is probably the one that the least people really get. And obviously, this is about how much throttle, how much power, sorry, goes to each wheel, the, to the rear wheels and to the front wheels when you're on the throttle and when you're off the throttle. Now, as you can read at the bottom, adjusting the car's differential will affect the way the power is transmitted to the rear wheels, and a locked differential will allow the drive, the driven wheels, to turn at different speed, whereas a locked differential. Both driving wheels rotate at the same speed. Advantages of a more open setup, a less tire wear, and a more gradual transition to traction loss, whereas a more locked may provide an advantage on outright traction. Now, personally, obviously that is quite complicated, but basically what it means is if you run it locked, you're probably going to get better traction, but if the car goes, then the car goes really badly. And if you run it unlocked, then that obviously means that the car is... You won't be as potentially as quick but you'll still be able to, you know, grip up the car quite nicely and it'll have a lot more saveability. So certainly in races, I personally prefer to run this sort of around 60, roughly around there. You know, that's personally what I like. I like quite a drivable car. Some of you might want a little bit more of a rigid car. Uh, qualifying as well, you know, you could probably risk it and run a little bit higher, but personally, you know, you sort of just want drivability on this. You personally, on throttle, I like to run it at about 60, as I said, and off throttle, usually sort of around at 65 you know so you've, you've got that flexibility with both of them it's not in completely unlocked is you know it's so you can still put the power down and the wheels do you know still rotate quite nicely so you don't end up with one wheel spinning far more than the other but i personally think you know 65 and 60 is quite a good sort of balance next up then is the suspension geometry and a lot of the things i found on f1 2017 is some things you sort of run and run very very similar to f1 2016 but you want to do it a little bit less. Now, the camber, personally, I prefer, you know, obviously, the more the camber is, uh, you know, the the more the angle, sorry, so obviously the minimum is minus 3.5 degrees and the maximum is minus 2.5 degrees when it comes to the front. Now, personally, you know, I like to run this at around, I prefer to run it closer to the extreme, at the sort of like 
on the minimum, but you know, not actually fully at the minimum. So I personally like to go with around 3.4, uh, minus 3.4 degrees, sorry, or minus 3.3. Now, obviously, that can depend on what you personally like. Obviously, if you run more angle, then the car will have less surface area in contact with the road. So you might struggle to put the power down a little bit more, but then it personally, you know, you're just able to get a little bit more um, turning and you know it just helps the car sort of feel more stable in personal thoughts but some people like to run it a lot lot lower than that rear camera as well i like to run it closer to the minimum around 1.8 or 1.9 front toe though personally i really sort of so far on f1 2017 i've found that i personally you know you always want to run it a little bit uh, higher like sort of 0.12 degrees on the front but I found really so far it doesn't make so much difference as it has in recent games. So you can probably afford to leave it stock. Personally, I like to run it just a little bit higher than that, sort of around 0.12 and 0.41, as you can see there. But obviously, it does change for every track, and it's sort of a bit down to personal preference. Suspension, now, this one I uh, would assume a lot of people know quite a lot about. But this is obviously how well the car rides over bumps, mainly, and how low the car is to the ground. So say around like a nice, smooth track. Uh, trying to think, well, I think the easier option is to go with quite a bumpy track, say Singapore, then you probably want to bring the ride height quite high, but then you also sort of want to focus on how sort of bouncy the car is, if you will, when it comes to how soft and firm the suspension is. If you run a very soft suspension, the car will sort of wallow over the bumps. It won't be as quick because obviously the car is less responsive where it is so, so soft, but if you run quite a firm suspension you can find the car grounding out and that can cause it to skid along rather than you know sort of gracefully gliding along so obviously around a bumpy circuit you probably want to run ever so slightly softer but around quite a flat circuit you probably want to run it a little bit harder now on the anti-roll bars on this game as well you can see in the bottom stiff anti-roll bars will reduce the amount of body roll while turning into corners but the load generated may cause the tires to be put under excessive load over longer corners so Personally, you know, you sort of got to weigh up the option for sort of one lap pace. You might want to run quite a firm front and rear anti-roll bar. You want to keep them at the same, so, you know, part of the car isn't more wobbly than another part. Personally, I like to keep these around sort of eight or nine. You know, they're a little bit firmer. And, you know, so you've got, you can sort of afford to run quite a lot of body roll. Obviously, the tyres have got a huge amount of grip on F1 2017 and also last a very long time. So you don't really need to worry too much about the tyres sort of getting, obviously... Uh, you know, sort of wearing out very quickly there. And the front ride height, it does solely depend on what circuit you're at. You know, for, as, as I said, like Singapore and Monaco, you want to run a very high front ride, of, sorry, both ride heights even. You want to keep the right, the both heights at exactly the same. But obviously around a bumpy circuit, you want to run it sort of eight or nine. And then around quite a smooth circuit, you might want to run it sort of at three or four. But obviously down to personal preference once more, you know, personally, I like to go, you know, I like to keep the car fairly smooth. You know, I don't like it bouncing around too much. But obviously the front and rear ride height, you know, if you make it a little bit lower, you can actually increase your top speed as well. So, you know, the car is low to the ground, so a little less air resistance there. So it is another sort of small way you can adjust the speed. Now, next up is the brake pressure. Now, personally, if you are someone that's using assist, then the with ABS, for example, you don't really need to worry about the brake pressure. You can run it very, very high if you really want to, and you'll be able to brake very, very late into corners. It will mean that your tire wear is a little bit worse, but obviously on F1 2017, that doesn't really matter too much. Now, I personally, where I am not an assist user on this game, I like to run it around the max of about 62, just so then you, you find, you obviously, you've got to balance itself with how good you personally are at, you know, sort of controlling the brakes, obviously, you know, letting off and, you know, applying more pressure if the car is starting to lock up a bit more, but I personally, you know, feel that 62 is quite a good balance there. Around bumpier circuits, you might run and run it a little bit lower, so, you know, the front wheels don't lock up as much over little bumps, but, you know, personally, 62 is sort of a good sort of ballpark figure, but once more, it will take a little bit of testing. Now, the next one is the brake bias, and personally, I like to keep it near enough around 60, to be honest. I don't really... You know, locking up the rear, especially with the T-cam position that I use, I don't know really anyone that sort of runs third-person camera anymore. I know Limitless used to a few years back. But personally, you know, 99% of people can't see where the rear wheels are. So if they're locking up the rears a lot more, that is really, really not ideal. So personally, I'll just keep it around about 60. Now, the front wheels are doing a bit more of the work. You can see what the front wheels are doing a lot more. Obviously, you can see if they're locking up in comparison. So I personally... Quite like to keep the brake balance at around about 60% on the front. So if you're on 50-50, then 
then you do sometimes find that the rear brakes do lock up a little bit more. Tire pressures, personally, you know, is sort of another one that I haven't really done too much work with on F1 2017 so far. I've sort of just left it fairly similar to stock. Uh, personally, though, I would recommend that you do bring the tire pressures down just a little bit for race situations, you know. That means, the obviously, if the tires have got less pressure in them, that means they're uh, obviously a little bit more flatter, if you will. So, obviously, that means that there is more contact with the road, which will help out with traction. Now, for one lap pace, you may want to run it just a little bit high, you know, so the car has got a little bit more responsibility in it, you know, where there is a little less sort of... Um, loose area contact with the road but I think personally you know I like to run it a little bit lower pressures you know easier to grip up better when it comes to race pace finally but certainly not least then is the weight distribution now on F1 2016 you just wanted to run it at 11 every single track personally I found on F1 2017 you want to run it about 8 or 9 really obviously on F1 2016 you could engine brake a huge amount and obviously F1 2017 you're not able to do that so you can't really sort of run it at 11 or you'll find whenever you try to brake the back end will just skid out any time. You know, if the car is an arrow straight, then the back end will kick out quite a lot. Obviously, you can counterbalance that a bit. But personally, if you run it at 11, you are probably going to end up giving yourself more issues than it's worth. Never, never, ever run the ballast at the front of the car, though. Because all you're doing then is, you know, you're putting a lot of weight on the front of the car. So it is struggling to turn in a little bit more. But hopefully... That has sort of helped you guys out. I've, you know, sort of tried to... I haven't tried to be brief with it all. I've tried to explain it quite well. But, you know, there is a lot more to find out with it. I might try and bring out some track guides fairly soon, you know, with some setups and hot laps. But, you know, people like Limitless are a little bit better for that sort of thing, guys. But hopefully, you know, you guys have enjoyed this. F1 2017, I've found so far that the stocks... If you remember back to F1 2015, stock setups were OP. F1 2016, you really needed to sort of fine-tune setups very, very well. F1 2017, I'd sort of say, is a bit in the middle at the moment. I think it sort of sides more to trying to fine-tune your setups a bit, but it doesn't really matter as much as it did in F1 2016. But yeah, hopefully, as I said, you know, you guys have enjoyed this little bit of a different video today. If you've got any ideas, as I said at the start, for any more F1 2017 setups, or sort of like guides or anything like that, or even if you just have any questions about this video, don't forget to ask them down in the comments. I try to respond to everything, but I will see you guys next time for a brand new video.